Hi, this is George Miller from the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. And we're talking again today about the geology of the Northern Bighorn Basin. And specifically, we're going to talk about uplift today. Well, here I am with my dogs Murphy and Janu at the mouth of the Clarks Fork Canyon again. And we're looking up into the canyon and we notice some very red rocks. And those red rocks are called Chugwater Formation. And the Chugwater Formation is red because it's been oxidized. Now, most of you have seen some rust at one time or another. And that's what oxidation is. It turns the iron red. So these rocks are oxidized. Well, if you look at the rocks, they kind of look like maybe a stack of pancakes. They're flat, but they've been tilted up. And that's the uplift from the Laramide orogeny. And we mentioned that before in a different video. The Laramide orogeny was the mountain building phase of the Rocky Mountains that occurred um, starting about 80 million years ago and ending about 50 million years ago. Well, these chug water formations were laid down as siltstone and sandstone. So they're very soft and they erode fairly easily. You can see how they've eroded um, in a little gully down into the Clark's Fork River. You can see that little red sort of delta there that comes out of that gully. Well, they're very soft and because they're sandstone and siltstone, they don't hold up very well. So Murphy and Janu love to go down to the river and it, we can see the erosive force of the river. And, and that term erosion is something we've talked about before. These dogs love to get down there and, and drink some water out of that beautiful flowing river. Now the river is pretty low right now and pretty clear. But in a few weeks, as snow starts to melt in the high country, the river will come right up. You can see they're out on that gravel plain, but you can see how high the banks can get. And we had years where we've had big runoff where the water was all the way up to the top of that bank across the river. So in a few weeks, those dogs won't be standing on those rocks. But the erosion of the sandstone is very dramatic. And you look here, you can see on the other side of the canyon, fins of red sandstone that are tilted upward. So when they were deposited, they were laying flat, of course, because sand piles up and then gets compressed into sandstone. And then with the Laramide orogeny, there was this huge mountain building phase and all this formerly horizontal rock got turned vertically. And you can even see here up in that uh, sort of little bowl there, how it got compressed as well. Well, there were lots of forces that were sculpting this canyon, and we've already talked about um, Heart Mountain, and you can see off in the distance, you can see Heart Mountain, um, at where the older layers are on top of the younger layers. Here, the, the uh, stratigraphy, or the way the layers are um, stacked, is very complicated because of all the faulting and uplift, and then the later glaciation sort of uh, cleared this out. Remember, we talked about glaciers last time. And we're looking back from the mouth of the canyon out toward that glacial moraine that we talked a lot, way out in the distance between those two hills is that glacial moraine we talked about last time. So it's a pretty amazing place, the Clark's Fork Canyon, and this Triassic siltstone or chug water formation. The Triassic was a long, long time ago. The Triassic went from about 250 million years ago to about 200 million years ago. So this was a long time ago. And that was when dinosaurs were first developing. They didn't really take over uh, as the dominant species till the Jurassic uh, period. But in the Triassic, there were um, dinosaurs and the first mammals appeared about that same time as well. So this rock is very, very old and finally uplifted to see the light of day. But you can see that gully in front of, of us right now is eroding. Um, 
and we can see that these sandstone cliffs will ultimately disappear. Well, join us next time for more geology.